This episode is brought to you by FreshBooks. Hello and welcome to ThreatWire. My name is Darren Kitchen. This is your summary of what's threatening security, privacy, internet freedom. And today I'm going to be droning on about drones. Uh, the TLDR is that a lot of people are freaked out by them and oh, not a whole lot's going to stop the fact that they're coming. Uh, Trappy, aka Raphael Perker, you may have uh, seen him in the news. He is a Swiss RC enthusiast, may know him from his amazing videos with the team Black Sheep. He's traveled the world doing some really amazing uh, stunt videography stuff. And uh, it's really cool, really neat, attracted the attention of the FAA. Years ago, the FAA to fine him $10,000 flying over the University of Virginia, and this was because of money for it. He was actually commissioned by the University of Virginia to do some aerial photography. And just recently, actually just the, over the weekend, a judge from the NTSB, or the National Transportation Safety Board, ruled that commercial drone use is illegal, the FAA saying otherwise ever since 2007. The, the judge actually is quoted as saying, time of respondent's model aircraft operation, no enforceable FAA rule or FAR regulation application model aircraft or for classifying the model as a UAS. What that means is, a, as we understand, uh, does these things called the FAR, the Federal Aviation Regulations, right? And they uh, don't actually have a way for modelers to classify their aircraft as a UAS, which is an unmanned aerial system. So, of course, <laughs> would actually invalidate the FAA's 2007 ban on commercial drone use and actually foster such innovations as we've seen recently with, say, or most publicly, I guess, with Amazon and their prime uh, delivery drones. Um, of course, months later, the FAA appealed the decision, so it's going to stay for the moment, and um, I guess we'll be following this one. We just covered a whole bunch of stuff, and I figured that we should actually put it into some sort of context, seeing that I'm an enthusiast of this kind of thing, and it's very relevant when we talk about privacy. So a little bit of background. Uh, when we actually talk about model aircraft, sometimes, well, actually, academy of them, it, it is, or a club, if you will, um, and it actually dates back to 1923. That was actually the date of the first model air show. In perspective, the FAA, who, you know, makes the air safe or whatever, um, actually was created by Congress in 1958. And that was following a mid-air collision between two passenger airlines over the Grand Canyon. A lot of people died. Not very cool. Created, that agency was created with the mandate to passenger traffic. Never the formation of the FAA did they ever address model airplanes. Not until 1901, in fact, did the FAA advisory Advisory AC 9157. Actually, I, I am a, um, a UAV pilot myself, and I actually keep this in my wallet. And basically, what this guy states is, you know, recognizing the voluntary guidelines set forth by the modeling clubs that uh, basically say, you know, stay a safe distance away from populated areas, um, that they recommend. Let's see, not operating a model aircraft uh, in the presence of spectators until we've designated the flight as airworthy. Um, and recommending not flying higher than 400 feet. I guess the, the common wisdom there is that the minimum flight uh, level of a small plane in an unpopulated area would be like 500 feet and a commercial one would be a thousand. So there's still a whole ton of buffer. That is, of course, um, not during approach and, and descent. Um, and takeoff and whatnot. Uh, in fact, that's actually mentioned here. When flying aircraft within three miles of an aircraft, notify the airport operator. Or when an air traffic safety, you know, basically stay away from airports. If you're going to be by them, let them know. All of these guidelines, and nothing in these guidelines did they actually specify minimum safe distance or, you know, stay away from sidewalks and trees and other things that Trappy was flying around. Um, I'm not sure if it's because of Trappy's previous videos where he's like flying past, you know, th flying through the Golden Gate Bridge or over uh, the Statue of Liberty, but whether or not it seems like he's going to be, or the FAA seems to be trying to make an example out of him. 
Um, regardless, in its current version, it means that there are three types of UAS or unmanned aerial systems. Okay, basically drones. What we're talking about here are we have drones. Classify a public drone as ones used by, for instance, our military. Uh, in Iraq alone, there are actually more than 700 these in use for surveillance and weapons deployment. Uh, customs and border protection use them to patrol the U.S.-Mexican border. Uh, I mean, a lot of the stuff is, you know, the predator drone. Back in 1995, if you can believe it or not, I think it's the old bird, but uh, still kicking pretty well when it's not armed with missiles, which is kind of like a, a weird subject. Um, not sure how I really feel about that, but regardless, um, Use. There's also civil use, right? And some examples of that would be agriculture, real estate, land surveys, firefighting. You've got property and an, an equipment inspection. You could do like anti poaching. Um, in other countries, this is actually being practiced because remind you that here in the United States, we're like decades behind on, on drone stuff. Um, traffic monitoring, of course, videography. I mean, Hollywood is going to do some amazing stuff with this when they can legally. Uh, and then FAA actually addresses one of the third UAS systems, our model use. And then they go on to say that, you know, users are is to um, mind their noise, uh, especially like you don't want like a loud drone in a hospital or churches or something. Advised not to fly in the vicinity of spectators until they know that their aircraft is airworthy. You know, they are advised to stay below 400 feet. All of these things are voluntary right and the FAA expects that the hobbyists will respect that kind of stuff well okay so that I've heard it and the way that I've heard that this has gone down is that essentially five we had you know domestically things kind of changed we had Katrina right really bad uh, lots of people no good uh, wouldn't it be great if those predator drones that we're using you know in the Middle East could be I don't know, looking for survivors and, and doing some actual good here in the States. And so um, they were actually weren't able to be used in Katrina because there was no sort of mandate to allow that kind of public use here. And so Congress pushed the FAA um, and have actually been pushing them because they're supposed to be coming up with policy by 2015 that is going to spell out how all of this can be used. But until then, we're in this kind of rocky gray zone and now, you know, Swedish people are getting uh, fined. But regardless, 2007, the FAA set forth a policy uh, that would actually allow public drones in certain uses. Like, for example, a predator could be used in a California wildfire. And in fact, that, that policy, 2007, from the FAA even addressed model aircraft as not impact. Most importantly, though, it actually this little provision where it says that none of unmanned aerial systems these drones could be used for commercial purposes without a certificate of airworthiness and the thing about a certificate of airworthiness in this regard is that none of them have issued there's no real way to go about getting one so if i'm a you know uh, a civilian drone operator right now and i want to start a business doing you know uh, aerial photography or real estate photography or, or land surveying or any of that stuff i have no actual way to go and get that coa um it actually has been technically issued like twice in but only for the antarctic and it was kind of weird but regardless interesting here about what happened in this 2007 thing which is what case is at odds with right now between the faa and trappy is that essentially this this policy from 2007 is just that it is non-binding it is a policy it is not a law a law requires notice and a comment it must be voted on it books and becomes a regulation a policy is nothing more than an agency saying this is what we would like to enforce well that's good on you if, if that's what you would like to enforce but you can't enforce it yet because it's not a law <laughs> okay so what's kind of gotten everything stirred up right now uh, between FAA and Trappy and it seems like a win uh, for Trappy moment it has been forward I think what we're going to see is um, FAA is even on a uh, you know FAQ last month uh, outlining some of these uh, things between uh, what is a model use and what is a commercial drone use. They are expected by September 30th of 2015 to put out more you know 
standardized rulings saying this is what can and can't be done with our airspace and stuff. Something that they've actually never regulated in the sense of unmanned aircraft. Remember, this is the organization that was put forth in the 50s to protect civilian air travel. You know, people on a big shiny silver thing hurling through the sky. And so it's a little weird when we start talking about these, you know, it's typically pieces of carbon fiber and plastic buzzing through the skies. So we're actually expected to see a couple of different uh, rulings. For example, there's um, the FAA has said that there will be you know some sort of definition for drones under 55 pounds. Um, ultimately, like a lot of this is because of public perception. If you said the you know say the word drone to most people, they think oh that's one of those big honking evil looking things that flies over the Middle East and bombs the crap out of people. And for the most part, that that's one side of it, yes. Um, and so there's absolutely a public perception thing with that. And I feel still feel like um, but there's a, a sense of unease when a new technology is born, something completely foreign. People are scared of it at first. That's just, that's typical, right? Uh, and the, the first thing that comes to mind is how is this going to violate my privacy? And I respect people's privacy to the utmost. In fact, when I fly my little quadcopters and stuff around the neighborhood, the number one thing that people ask me is, does that have a camera on it? And so it's, it's understood that the public is going to have this perception because of military drones, because of drones with cameras, and, and that is absolutely going to be a concern. But it's just interesting to see how the FAA is at odds with this. and. Uh, how this is going to shake up. I mean, right now the FAA is sending cease and desist letters to would otherwise be doing some really innovative stuff with drones, you know, whether that's in uh, use of videography or land survey or agriculture or what have you. So there's still, on the one hand, some really brilliant uses for some amazing technology. And on the other hand, the need to protect people's privacy. And so that's why I bring it up in the regards of ThreatWire. Uh, not as this is what's violating your privacy today and the latest software patch you need to worry about, but something that I care about. And I'd love to hear from you guys what you think. So let me know in the comments, right? If I say drone, what's the first thing that comes to mind? What do you think the FAA should do in this case, seeing that now they, they are they tasked with the, um, with the sense of protecting America's airspace from unmanned vehicles, what would you do? Uh, let me know in the comments and uh, um, welcome back. It's uh, it's still in beta. I'm still trying to figure out how to do this. It's very much uh, casual at the very moment. Um, however, we do in fact have a sponsor this week. So that's kind of weird. Also, let me know in the comments how you feel about that because I, I don't know either. But regardless, we're gonna take a quick break and thank our sponsor. FreshBooks is a simple online accounting solution for small business owners just like you who want to skip the headache at tax time. The entire Hack5 team has been using FreshBooks for years and it absolutely makes my life a lot easier this time of year. And for a limited time, you can try FreshBooks for free for 60 days. To get started, visit GetFreshBooks.com and enter Hack5 in the How Did You Hear About Us section. Right now, FreshBooks is giving our viewers an extended 60-day free trial to make tax time a breeze. Again, go to getfreshbooks.com and enter Hack5 in the How Did You Hear About Us section when signing up. Well, that just about wraps it up for ThreatWire. I should point out that I have the utmost respect for the guys over at the FAA and, of course, the guys in the towers that don't get the love that they deserve for keeping our airspace safe. I want a safe airspace, but I want innovation as well. The hacker in me just wants to see R2-D2 zipping through the skies. So, again, let me know in the comments how you feel about this, and I will see you guys next time. Cheers.